Twisted Builds wideband update. So, uh, as I said in the last video, this is my old one. And like, you see how, and again, the transistors, or the, sorry, the MOSFET's all wired and weird and whatnot because the board was misdesigned. So, that was the old style board. This is the new style board. So it's on my board mount right now. So, it's got a 180 degree straight up and down connector into an amp seal connector. And, um, it's all flat plane, so it'll be nice. It's nice and easy to print a box for it. Actually, I've got a box printing currently. Um, this will be like a two-part video, so I'll, I'll take a video of the box in this again once everything's complete. Just trying to bring up the quality of my videos a little bit. Anyhow, I've had this powered up for a little bit um, to show you. Excuse again the messy workshop area. Um, pulls about once it's up to temp, it pulls about you know three quarters of an amp. And you can see the heater like getting you know throwing more heat to it less heat to it whatever but about pulls about three quarters of an amp um it what that reading was when this first powered up about one and a half amps of draw at power up and then it drops back down so it's hooked up to that sensor right now which i'm not going to touch because it, uh, it's blustering hot but um i'm going to turn on my meter i'm hoping my meter stays powered up long enough for this because it was showing me a low battery signal a little bit ago but anyway, this has the same pinout that that one did, so my whole like harness idea is the same. Two uh, simulated zero to five, well sorry, two simulated narrowband outputs, two zero to five volt analog outputs, one for like, you know, going into your ECU of choice, and the other one saved to like a zero to five volt AFR gauge, or whatever you, you fancy, data logger, whatever. It's got two outputs for the wideband, zero to five volt, and two simulated narrowband outputs. So. Connectors are all the same. I was able to reuse the same harness that I had for my prototype one. Um, and this wire right here is my zero to five volt, which I hook, have hooked up on my leg right here to the um, meter. So, lighter. It does take a second for it to sense this, but this is a very crude test. But there you go. I have no doubt it'd react a lot faster in car. You yeah, can see it's already up. But with exa actual exhaust going through, because that's a used sensor. That's just an old cheap you know, EU sensor I had to actually replace at work. This one's actually not the greatest. Actually, I didn't replace it. This was another tech sensor. It doesn't really matter. Um, it got replaced, so I figured it'd be perfect for just testing purposes on the bench. And everything's working currently. So. Bring this back up again. Watch that. Yeah, you can see the battery light flashing on my meter. So, it's all bench test working. I need to print the housing, which I'll show you in the, probably in a minute here. And um, once the housing's printed, make sure everything fits nice and good. I'm going to test it in the car. Once car's testing is done, I've got at least one, um, one guy that wants to... Uh, test a prototype out for me do some beta testing so I'm gonna do that I think he's gonna probably use an ND, NTK sensor instead of a Bosch one which this should work with just fine um, it's still the 4.9 LSU style no free air calibration needed um, it'll be just a plug in and go type deal so very very excited it's very small very tiny little thing like give you a reference let me see if I can find something that you could easily reference well here's a lighter Here's a, sorry, long look lighter to give you an idea. I know it's not really, you know, standard issue, but uh, here's some masking tape. Ta-da. So, it's not that big. I think it's like three by two and three quarter or something. So, it's a pretty small board. I tried to keep it really small and, and you know, packed so that way it fit in a lot of different places. And uh, the housing is the same way. I try to keep it as small as possible. So actually, let's power this down quick. Let me unplug the power to it. Shut the shut that guy off. And it takes a minute because it's got a bunch of capacitors in it. Shut my meter off. Let's walk over. Excuse my messy workshop area, but uh, let's walk over. You'll see the printer is printing. So right now it says it's six percent done. Um, the print timer said it was going to take about uh, nine hours to print a box, so 
That nine hours is about to go in about three seconds. Three, two, one. Ta-da! Took nine and a half hours. So. Anyway, that's the printer box. And you can hear my other printer printing the other parts came in. Anyway, I'm gonna see if this fits. And here is the final product. <coughs> so um that's the amp seal connector connected up to it. And you can see I got little uh, quarter inch holes on both sides of it for mounting. And just for size comparison, let me, uh, excuse me, I'm filming this one handed. But uh, there's a wide band sensor that controls. That's for size comparison, just to see how little that box actually is. So, it, you know, it's not the smallest thing on earth, but it'll be good. And I do plan on selling these as DIY kits and also uh, assembled units. And the red is just a prototype case. I do need to change the design a little bit. Like for instance, this top notch up here to clear the tangs for the, the quick release or whatever on the amp seal. Um, it needs to like go down a little bit so I can actually engage the weather proof seal. There's some other odds and ends. But I mean, overall it's not bad. I'm gonna try to do this one handed so but let's grab a hold of this guy. Oh, so it pops. And ta -da. So leave that on my way. That is it, and you can see right, right there how the box. You almost see if I get the see that clearness in there. That's actually a seal. So I uh, I made that too high. I need to drop it back down. I think I actually can probably wiggle that in there around it I'll have to look but overall I mean I do need to change the, the base design a little bit it's not thick enough for the recesses I have for the printer the printer just wasn't too happy with it so I gotta fix that but overall it's not bad um, definitely for a first print the first prototype print it came out really good so very very impressed um, I do. I got more black coming in the mail, which hopefully will be here Tuesday. I'm guessing, so I'll print another one out in black. But um, and I may offer like different case, you know, colors. That could be a thing if people want them. Like I got you know blue, silver, black, red, possibly glow in the dark <laughs> if they want it or whatever. So. But anyway, it's assembled, it's working. Um, I got, I ordered parts to build four more of these today. So I'll get, I'm gonna keep this guy, this one's mine for the Firebird. But um, I'm going to uh, get um, uh, Jack Nichols one, and it sounds like Ford Dunlop one. So hopefully you guys don't mind me dropping your names on the video, but uh, that is the plan. That way they can prototype test them, see how they like them. And we'll go from there. And I am looking also into gauge solutions for the 0 5 volt output from this to a gauge. So um, just give me a little bit of time with that. I'm, I'm either going to build something, as I said in a previous video, with you know one of these deals where it has you know the, the readout put on a screen, which would be thinner this way, but whatever. You'd still have a screen readout. Or um, see if I can buy them pre-made and just resell them or something. I haven't decided yet. Or offer the link so you guys can buy them. But, um, haven't figured that out yet. I will at some point. Soon, hopefully. But, there you go. Wide band progress update. Thank you guys for watching. If you, uh, like seeing my, uh, update videos and whatnot, please subscribe. Uh, I do plan on the next units I get. I'm gonna, um, videotape how to build them and assemble them for yourself if you want to buy the DIY kit from me. Um, I will, as I said, I'm going to be having the IC chips and whatnot solder on the board and the header, the program header, so I can program the chips before they go, but everything else will be up to you. Um, it's really easy, it's not hard. Uh, I made it as simple as possible with those boards, so. And I plan on offering different kits, so like if you want to just buy the board, the chip programmed, and nothing else, give you a parts list you can do that or you can you know buy it assembled ready to go or however you decide you deem fit um i still gotta work on everything that way but that will be it so hey 
thank you guys for watching. And uh, as I said, if you like these videos, please subscribe. I plan on putting more of them out soon. Thanks, guys. Bye.